Hello, you're welcome back to Neat Strings Millionaires Club. I'm actually working on one of the best, almost favorite millionaires hat material, crinoline. My name is Mary Atuara and I'm the CEO of Neat Strings Headways and Crafts. So I created this page as a way to help young millionaires to shorten their journey to becoming pro millionaires. And I share tips and tricks on a weekly basis. You're welcome to subscribe. So now today, I'm going to be showing you how to extract crinoline hairs. When I say crinoline hairs, you probably must have seen some fascinators that have, you know, strands that look like feathers, but they're not feathers because there's nothing at the tip. So those strands are actually made from crinoline. And I call them crinoline hairs, you could call them crinoline strands. And crinoline is such a versatile material that you can make a whole lot of designs and techniques from them. So today we're going to be focusing on how to extract crinoline hairs from this um, eight inch crinoline. Normally our crinoline will always have thread on one side of the fabric. What we're actually making use of is the side that doesn't have thread. So if you have yours having thread on this side, then we're going to cut this other side. So the first thing we're going to do is get your scissors and just cut off as if you're trying to cut open the ends of the crinoline. So we're just going to cut it this way. We're just going to cut it this way. The idea is to cut it open so that we can allow the crinoline to fray. You know, when you have fabrics that are not weaved at the end, what tends to happen is that they fray. The threads inside the fabric starts to pull out. So that's exactly what we want to do with this crinoline piece. So we're just going to pull, start pulling out the crinoline to expose them to fraying. We're just going to fray the crinoline. We're just going to fray them. We're just going to fray them. And once you start to fray, fray it, to, um, once you start to pull it out, you can see all the crinoline already starts looking like hair. You know, you're already exposing the strand. So this is the reason why I coined it crinoline hair. I don't know what you're going to call yours, but you can already agree with me that it's looking like hair because they're all close together. So we're going to set, set all the hairs free. We'll set them free. We'll set them free because we need them to be free. We don't want them to be all bound up together. Let's see their individual beauty so once you get a hold of a bunch of them then the next thing you're going to do is you are going to hold on to this at the bottom and either using a candle gum to just close up the bottom or you could use thread to tie it up first but i'll just go ahead and use my candle gum to close up the bottom. So here is my candle gun. So I'll just apply the candle gun right at the roots of the strands, making sure to capture all the hairs. Now once that's done, I have to allow it to dry a little bit because it's extremely hot. I'll let it dry, it won't be so wet, it won't be dry, but in between, and then once it's warm, I can just hold it together and roll it. So the rolling it is just to make sure that all the strands are captured in the gum. So now I'm going to repeat this again so that you see what I'm doing. You can get out as many bunch of strands as you want. So here I took about eight strands and I'm pulling them all out gently so that I can just get, you know, a straight line, uh, line or let's just call it a bunch of straight strands we don't want them curling up so we have to take our time and pull them out gradually okay. 
okay so now that that is done i'm just going to create a base by rolling it and i'll repeat exactly the same process we have done and this is just what you can do to get as many bunch of phenolene strands as possible so you don't have to do more than eight to ten strands so it doesn't become difficult to pull them out to so have them straight by the time you're done so now we have two of them and we can get as many as possible for your projects and um, here is where i used that kind of design in this fascinator you see how it gives it a very polished and classy look you know it's not the kind of finishing you see everywhere so sometimes when you work with feathers you can always put it on as an add-on it makes your work stand out you can see i also applied it here this fascinator and i invite you to do the same thanks for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe